Hello everyone, Vincent Hill from HDTV Test here. By profession, I'm a TV reviewer and calibrator, but today I'm standing here to present the HDR analysis of Destiny 2 by my colleague Adam Fairclough. Now, Adam has sent me the footage in 4K 60p, which is absolutely necessary to accurately reflect the in-game footage. But as a direct result of that, I've had to film this video in 4K 60p, which, if I'm honest, I don't really like because it looks like a permanent soap opera effect is being applied on me. And the motion just looks too clear. You know, it's just not blur enough for me anyway. But on the positive side, I haven't looked this smooth since the day I walked up to this girl in the bar, whipped out my phone and said, I've run out of data. Can I connect to your hotspot? And on that bombshell, it's time for Adam to take the stage. Destiny 2 launched with HDR on PC, with support arriving on consoles in time for the game's first expansion, The Curse of Osiris, just three months later. Destiny 2 is Bungie's first HDR compatible game. In a curious, almost paradoxical series of events, it just beat the 10 year old Halo 3's HDR implementation by just a few weeks. I've spent a lot of time playing Destiny 2 since the Forsaken expansion was released, and it's still one of my go to showcase games for HDR. It's not subtle by any stretch of the imagination, as a game with a sci-fi setting of neon lights, alien planets and magic, Destiny repeatedly punches you in the eyes with high frame intensity. The game makes extensive use of particle effects. Each particle you see behaves as an emissive source. You can see this all the time in the visualisations here, and this is some of the most common uses of high luminance in the game. The varied environments, whether it's interior or exterior, offer a huge array of lighting conditions that allow you to see the game's AAA art. This often looks like it's straight off the page of a concept art book. Destiny 2 has a few quirks in regards to its setup, so let's take a look at these and optimise them a little. First of all, perhaps a source of problems for certain Xbox One players, the brightness profile carries across from SDR, which is something we've seen in a few other games such as Far Cry 5 and Hitman. And to fix this, just quit the game, disable HDR10 in the Xbox video settings, reboot the game and head into the brightness settings. Both SDR and HDR treat the 4 uh, as the default value, and adjusting this is going to impact the overall brightness of the image. Um, the good news is that for Xbox owners is that if you find the game a little bit too dark, you can actually use this to your advantage and turn it up a little. Let's set it at 4 and hop across back into HDR. Hopping back across to HDR, you'll notice your new brightness settings kick in as the game loads up your profile. The HDR white point setting behaves as expected, they are tied to your brightness setting, so just to set it as it describes. I was unable to identify any clipping or roll off where the game itself restricts data, suggesting it's uncapped to the full 10 bit range, 10,000 nits. Even so, you can see that the artists have clearly controlled every light source and effect within the game to function well within the dynamic range. In the hangar here, notice the several different emissive light sources, the floodlights, the candles, the neon lights, and these are all producing different intensities and have all been clearly defined and separated as different types of light. Depending on how you set the brightness, and despite there being no upper limit on the luminance, you won't see anything that kicks significantly higher than 1500 nits. This in itself being quite rare, and it's restricted to all but the brightest things in the game. Walking around the tower at night is a really great place to see the sheer variety of effects. Destiny 2 is an inherently contrasty game, often intensely dark and light at the same time. This is not only an aesthetic choice, but a reflection of the game's narrative, the battle between darkness and the Guardian's light. The game design itself uses this extreme darkness to obscure enemies in undefeatable blackness to hide platforms and jump puzzles. As well as this, the game often uses intentionally limited black levels to obscure cave entrances and to create exploration challenges and dark areas. The game literally uses the light to guide players towards it. However, this is often mistaken for a fault, a uh, black crush. Yeah. 
One of the reasons Destiny 2 makes for such a great showcase of HDR is that this extreme contrast pushes many displays to deliver some of their highest peak brightness. Any HDR panel is limited by the amount of peak brightness it can achieve and deliver to the screen at any given point. The smaller the area it is having to illuminate, the brighter the display is able to push it. For example, a top of the range OLED can deliver around about 900 nits on an area that is only 2% the size of the screen. However, if it's asked to deliver the same level of brightness to the entire screen, even as a flash, the panel would only actually push out 160 nits. This is a really compelling reason to ensure that your display and games are set up correctly as to not waste luminance by raising overall brightness to ensure that you have the available overhead for when it's needed. One of the things that we do regularly see in a number of games is that the HUDs are raised in line with the peak brightness. Destiny 2 unfortunately falls foul of this with HUD elements often requesting 1200 plus nits. This might mean that luminance is being used here when it could be better used over here. And of course it does create a risk of burning. You can mitigate this a little bit by changing the HUD opacity to low in the display settings. But let's move on to another source of issues, the HDR black point setting in the game. This setting should, in theory, control the game's display mapping for the darker parts of the image. However, it looks very much like there's a bug. The centre point of the slider is the darkest point, zero if you like. Moving this to the right will raise the black levels, useful if you're in a lighter room. However, move it below the centre point, even by just a single click on the D-pad, and the display map will fail, removing black data. Another curiosity of caves like this, where we can see an almost negative-like effect occurring, where specific pixel values are collapsing and becoming pure black in areas where they should not be. We see this sometimes in caves such as the entrance to Failsafe on Nessus, or on a couple of strikes which are using a similar colour filter. This looks as if the data used to drive the colour grading hasn't successfully transitioned from 8-bit to 10-bit in a few isolated areas. We don't see this problem occurring if we flip over to the game in SDR. So news just in. Uh, since uh, version 2.1 of Destiny 2 was launched on the 27th of November, the good news is this has been fixed. All of the caves and all the missions where this was present no longer have this problem. So that's great. Well done, Bungie. So let's just sum up the video. Destiny 2 looks really great in HDR. Uh, it's a super contrasty game, sometimes very deliberately dark, don't be concerned about that. If you've got a really great display that can do those really inky blacks, that is going to look even darker. But don't worry, it is meant to be like that and the game uses that as part of its design. For the setup, make sure your brightness is on 4 if you're on Xbox, if you're on PS4 you won't have that problem. Follow the instructions for the white point setup and for the black point setup, make sure you set it exactly in the middle. That is pretty much just in line with the left hand side of the letter N in the word icon that's on screen. This is your default position. If the game is still too dark or you appear to be getting black crush, then move this further to the right. Don't worry about the icons on screen as they won't actually help you to set it up. You're gonna have to just do this by eye. So again, thanks for watching the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this look at some HDR gaming from Destiny 2. Again, same as last time, if there's any other games you'd like us to look at, just mention them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. So thanks again to Adam for his analysis of Destiny 2. I hope you found his video useful and gave you some insight about how to set up your console for playing this game. Now, the next time he does an HDR analysis on a HDR game on this channel, I may just jump straight into his analysis without me standing here and presenting his work. So please don't go about commenting in the YouTube section asking Wes Vincent, Wes Vini, Wes Vincenzo, right? So I think uh, you have to accept that this channel is bigger than me. I think we've got a good thing going here. There's a great community going on. All of you liking, commenting, sharing my videos, helping each other out with your comments. On this platform, I don't really do any comment moderation or delete any comments unless it's obvious spam, unlike some other channels or some other forums where there's heavy comment moderation going on. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video, even if I'm not 
present in it. Thank you.